draw me close to you. And never let me go. I believe it all down again. Because I know that I'm your friend. And you are my desire. And no one else will do. No, and nothing else can take your place. I want to feel the warmth of your embrace. Mm -hmm. Help me find a way. Get closer to you Cause you are I want Oh I want Jesus And you are I rather need it You Just draw me closer to you You are I want You're so dear to me You are I bear You are I want. Help me draw closer to you. Help me draw closer to you. Help me draw closer. I want to draw closer to you. You're such a dear friend to me, and I want to be a dear friend to you. I don't want to take you for granted, Lord. Because you don't take me for granted. This is a time where I get into God's presence. And as I get into God's presence, you should be able to feel God's presence also. So what you're learning is that God wants a closer relationship with you. His word says that with two or three are gathered in his name, he's there in the midst. So even as, as I do this and you're there watching, he's there. Even in your quiet time with him, he's there. He's there. Because he wants you to draw, to draw even closer to him. As you draw closer to him, he draws nigh to you. 
He's not a man that he should love. He's God. He's not man. He's God. And that's what we have to remember. That he is God. And his presence is right there. Right there with you. And we have to believe that. It's all about our faith. It's all about our faith. What do we want to believe? What do we want to believe? We can believe the evil report that we've gotten from the doctor. We can believe that. Why can't we believe his word? God's word says that we are the healed and not the sick. So when we get an evil report, our job is to take it before the Lord and say, look, God, they say I have cancer, but your word says that Jesus died so I can be cancer free. You know, Jesus' name is above every name. Every name. Remember, his name is like a high tower. We can run it to it, and we are saved. We are safe in his tower. His high tower. God doesn't want us to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. The enemy can attack us because of fear. He shoots darts at our mind to bring on fear. To bring on fear and doubt. If we don't give in to that fear, he has nothing. He has nothing to hold to hold us. Nothing. Our job is to use the word of God. God tells us to fear not. He says that that many times in the Bible. Fear not. He doesn't want his people to be afraid. He tells us to fear him because that's not the same fear. It's not the same fear. He wants us to show him reverence. Mm. To show him that we know that he's our God. And we have respect for that. This is when a queen comes into the building. And people stand up. They show in reverence to that king, to that queen. This is how God wants us to do him. He wants us to have that reverence for him, not being afraid like like we would fear an, a mad dog coming at us. He doesn't want us like that. He loves us too much for us to be like that. He just wants us to draw closer to him, to reverence him, reverence his presence. We are to practice his presence. This is if you're practicing anything as you practice his presence. And the way you practice his presence is to spend time with him. To spend time with him. Once you spend time with him, you get used to hearing his voice. I can't have a close friend and I don't know her voice. How am I not going to know my close friend's voice? The people that we come in contact with a lot, we know what their voice sounds like. So as soon as they call, I, I should know who voice that is because I spend time with that person. That's how it is with our Heavenly Father. We should know his voice because we spent time with him. 
when we hear the voice, we act on it. When we hear the voice, we act on what the voice told us. That's out of obedience. That's out of love for him. Some things he'll tell us that we, we really don't want to do. But in the end, it's why we're good. Just like with our children. We tell them things they don't want to hear. They don't want to do. But we know it's for their good. We can't feed our children um, what they want to eat. They eat cookies all day if we give it to them. So we have to give them vegetables. We have to give them fruit. We have to give them them all of the the basic food groups because we know what's best for them. We can't let them decide because if we do, we're going to end up with a sick child, an unhealthy child, because we've been putting the wrong things in their system. Same thing with us. We can't we can't just listen to anything, watch anything, just just gravitate to anything that we hear. God tells us to be careful what we see, what we hear, and what we let come out of our mouth. Because you know that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we have to be careful what we let come in our gates. We have to be careful. Because we can kill ourselves. So we want to say the right thing. We want the right things to come in. If the right things come in and through our eyes, then the right thing is going to come out of our mouth. God wants us to know so much. A lot of things he wants to teach us. But if we're not spending time with him, we'll never know. We'll never know what he has for us. We'll never know that decision that that we have been struggling to make. We're looking at the money. And God is looking at how long is that business going to last. You want to go to this company, how long are they going to last? They can be paying $10 more than the other place. But what good is it going to do you if they're going to close down in a year? We have to be careful. That's why we need to hear from God. We don't know all the answers. And we never will. But if we listen to the Holy Spirit speak to us, then we're on the right track. We are on the right track. And we have to get used to how he speaks to us. I've never heard him audibly. Unless it's a word at church that I've heard. Or I may be watching someone on TV that's teaching. And I hear something. But as far as God speaking directly to me. Um, I haven't heard him audibly, but it's like it's in my spirit. It'll bear witness to my spirit what he's saying. Like I said, we really have to be careful what we let come in and the people that we're with. The people that we're with. If you're with the wrong person, The person can bring you down. They can bring you down. Some people don't don't want to be by themselves. But you're not by yourself. And if you wait, God can bring the right person into your life. But if you're choosing to gravitate 
to the wrong people, he can't. Because you don't know who the right people are. That person that irritates you a little bit, that's the person you need to be with. Because that person can be rubbing those rough edges that you have just rubbing those those edges smooth so that you can be on the right track. If you're with someone and when you get out of their presence, you're so drained, that's not the right person. Because that person has drained everything that you had out of you. But if you're with somebody who makes you think, who when you when you say something, they can give like um, good advice. It might not even be the um, advice that you wanted to hear, but when they said it, something clicked on the inside, and you knew. You knew that was the way that you needed to go. But sometimes, because it comes from a certain person that we don't like, we don't want to hear it. That's not how the world operates. It's not how the world operates. Just because you don't like somebody and they give you the right answer, but you want to do something else because you don't like that person. You're not going to make it like that. Say it the same, but you're not. We have to have listening ears. We have to have listening ears. And God will let us know what direction to go in. He will. He confirms his word. So if we ask in him which direction to take, but we really want to go to the left, He's telling us to go to the right. And we have asked him. And somebody comes that we don't like. That's just saying something randomly. Don't have any idea about the question that we ask God. And what they're saying means that you have to go to the right. Then just go to the right. Just go to the right. We have to not be just governed by our feelings. Our feelings lie to us. Our feelings lie to us. We can't be governed by our feelings. We can look at a person and judge them and say, no, I don't like that person. Just because how they talk, how they look. We have to be careful because God can see your answer through anybody. Sometimes it's not even with words as well, with something that we see. We have to be watchful. We have to be watchful. God tells us to watch and pray. So after we pray, we need to be watchful. Because God's going to answer our prayers. He answers prayers. He answers prayers. How can you serve a God that doesn't answer prayer? He answers our prayers. He hears us. We're His children. He hears us. I hear my children when they speak. We have to be attentive to his voice. And have that faith that we know he's speaking to us. Like I said, it might be a voice that we don't want to hear, that we don't particularly like. But when we listen, we know it's the truth. We know it's the truth. So we need to not be stubborn. Because that stubbornness is going to cause you. That stubbornness will cause you. Just listen to God. Listen to Him. 
And when you do, even though it's taking the advice of somebody that you don't like, you're going to see that your life is better. You will see that your life is better. Sometimes it's jealousy. Every time you're going through something, that person that you don't like seems to have the answer. And why does God do do that? Why does he do that? He has to get something out of us. He has to get something out of us that's in us that he doesn't want in us. So that's why he does that. And it doesn't feel good at all. It doesn't. It's like, why do you use somebody that I don't like? But he does that. He does that. And if you look back at it, it's like you just, you have to laugh. Because he does things like that. And it's like, why you give that person that hand to the Lord? <laughs> but we really serve a good, good father. We really do. And if we let him have his way in our life, we will find that things go a lot smoother. A lot smoother. Let's see what the word says for today. I don't have it already ready this morning. I forgot to get it ready. Okay. I have a U version on my phone. Today's verse says Second Corinthians third chapter. 17th verse, and this is the New King James Version. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, New King James Version. Now the Lord is a Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So walk in your freedom. Walk in your freedom. You don't have to be bound by anything. You don't have to be bound by by what um, people have said about you in the past. How you, you're not going to make it. Um, your idea is no good. Uh, don't listen to that mess. You don't have to listen to that. God has something good in store for you. This is the same, the same um, verse in the Amplified Version. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, emancipation from bondage, true freedom. That's your true freedom. Emancipation from bondage. And remember, God is not man. We want to put him in a box and say he's going to be like this. He's, he's not. He's not man. He's God. He is God. And God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, those three act as one. We have to know him for ourselves. That's the only way we're going to make it. And like I said, the enemy operates on fear. If he can get you to fear something, he can get you to fear that your child, your children are not going to be any good, your children are going to be on drugs because you were. If he can get you to fear, he has you. Don't let him get you in fear. He has you when he can get you to fear. You've taught your children one way, and you're fearful that they're going to go the other way. Don't let them get you into fear, because what you fear is what will come up on you.
you know, Job did that. What he feared is what came upon him. So you have to be careful. Don't let fear enter your heart. Do not let fear enter your heart. Don't do it. Don't do it. You don't have to be fearful about your children. You pray, let it go. Pray for your children and let it go. You can't hold on to them. You've led them in the right direction. Just let it go. Let it go. They're going to make mistakes. You made mistakes. You made mistakes too. And we're still going to make mistakes because we're human. But you know, it's for their learning. It's for their learning. And just watch. Watch and see. Watch and see. Ask God to send laborers their way. Ask God to send them a mentor that can mentor them. Okay, so maybe it's not you. Maybe it's not you. Maybe they're not listening to you. But sometimes they'll listen to someone else out there on the street before they'll listen to a family member. So don't get upset about that. Let God use who he wants to use. And you will find that the same thing that you have told them is the same thing God has somebody else to tell them. Okay? So they didn't hear it from you. It doesn't matter as long as they get on that straight and narrow path. I love you and I pray for you. And it's coming to the end of our 30 minutes. And I always do the salvation prayer because I don't want to see nobody go to hell. If you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. It's just the bottom line. So I'm going to pray the prayer. And all you do is repeat after me. And mean it from your heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I know that I'm a sinner and I know that you are a savior. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for giving me many chances. I want to be in heaven with you. I want to accept your love for me. Thank you for what you've done on Calvary. You came, you died, you were resurrected just for me. I appreciate you and what you've done on the cross. Thank you for making me a part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. So now you belong to him. If anybody asks you if you are a Christian, you can say yes. And God hears your prayers. Because you belong to him. The only prayer of a sinner that God hears is repentance. So now you belong to him. I love you much. And I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Bye. Have a blessed day.